Welcome to Fentor. Where's the bike? Well, today's video, I buggered up. Oh, here's a dog. This is Kettle. <laughs> today's video um, that you'll see at the moment, I messed up filming at the start. So, introductions are all a bit bollocksed. Um, basically, I put it on hyperlapse. So, <laughs> stupid. I should blame the GoPro, but I think it was user error. Bad workman blames his tools. So I head off to a company called The Bike Thing to see a guy called Steve, who specializes in amazing kit for your GS and other bikes. Particularly, really beautiful lights from Denali. Very high power, more visibility to other users and for you driving fast at night. Extra loud horn called a sound bomb. Wake up the idiots that pull out in front of you. And, and uh, an extra brake light. I also included some footage for a future series I'm starting on history. So let's get on with the proper footage and I'll get on walking petal. Past the A1 and out on some great roads. So using the Kalimoto app today, I've used that once before, watching quite a few YouTubers raving about it, I thought I'd give it a go. Um, don't think I've used it enough really <laughs> to uh, give a full re review of it. Um, if you program the Nav 6 to have multiple points of interest, I find it an absolute faff uh, doing it on the computer, then getting it up there, and then if you miss a waypoint, it wants you to go back to it. And you think, well, I've missed it, it doesn't really matter, or you want to change your mind on a route. I put quite a few waypoints in um, to find my way to a bike thing, and if you miss one of them, as I was doing the other day, it just reroutes you. So you can sort of on the fly change. And between each point of interest, you can choose that section to be a direct route, twisty or super twisty. So here it's working out really good. Also gives you a nice arrival time, which is also very handy. Um, well, we'll have to do that, but uh, I think it takes into account the twists, which so other sat navs may not take into account. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. I've used my knowledge of some of these roads, so I'm trying to take a route that avoids any major towns between my home and a bike thing. Daventry. I mentioned earlier I'm putting together some historical rides and ideally with today's trip to Daventry to a bike thing nearby is a historical site which is where the Daventry experiment took place on the 26th of February 1935. It's when Arnold Wilkins and Robert Watson Watt tested their theory of radar. Could they detect an aircraft? And it was successful. Now, I'm not going to go into the history just now. Well, I'm going to start talking about that shortly, but in another video. Um, because as well as visiting the site of the Daventry experiment, I'm also going to visit Bordsey on the East Anglian coast where the radar concept was developed into an operational system and then finally on another ride I shall pop over to the Lincolnshire Wolds to the site of the last remaining of the home chain radar towers the only one in existence in its original position at RAF Stenigon, high up on the Lincolnshire Wolds. So, 
you may have seen it in my previous videos, but it's uh, it's uh, it's got to be revisited for the series. But it won't be a series. I think I'll do it as one episode. I don't want to bore you too much. So that'll be coming up uh, at some point. We need to go to Baldsea and Stenigod, so they're going to be a couple of separate trips to those of the coming weeks, hopefully. Put it together. Hey presto, historical ride out. I've got some other ideas. We'll see what comes of those at some point. This is Olney. I've been through here for probably 20 years. Quite a nice looking place, isn't it? Good old Hovis sign there. Sandwich land. Pop over there and get some breakfast. Time for some breakfast. Ooh, beauty. Just had a very nice bacon and egg baguette, which is uh, a nice surprise in Aldi. Quite an attractive place, but so much traffic. There we are. Ooh, that's a good view. Look at that. Wow. Quite something. This is a Stoke Goldington. Another attractive place and somewhere I'm absolutely sure I've never been through in a car, certainly not on a bike. This is uh, just unbeatable. just enjoying being here on the bike gorgeous roads ah it's lovely it's just so good you don't have to hammer along to enjoy being out for a ride maybe that's what you say when you're my age <laughs> this is really good I've just finished at the Radar Memorial. You'll be able to watch that in a future episode of Fintor. Now I've got a few minutes, nine miles and a few minutes left of my journey. Now coming into the outskirts of Daventry. So, I will see you at a bike thing shortly. bike thing has fitted four lamps on the front two S4s two D4s and at the rear we have the additional brake light and a sound bomb yes so it's called extra loud horn in other words let's give that a go <laughs> that's cool isn't it 
I've got earplugs in and that's loud. Anyway, um, what a nice road this is. So, I have a, a route planned in the Kalimoto app to take me back across country. I came sort of to the south of Northampton and uh, south of Huntingdon this morning. And on the way back we're going north of Northampton, north of Corby, skimming Rutland a little bit and then across the Fens back to Ely. You know it's great having these long summer evenings isn't it? So good for biking. And I know the reason to get the lights is better visibility to others of me approaching in daytime but actually looking forward to getting out at night and giving them a go as well. It'll be uh, a cool thing to try. Cool, got her up here. Top of a hill. Now on the section of the Rutland TT. What a road, what an evening. It's been quite a good day. Great ride over to a bike thing. I was able to work there using my iPad video conferencing. So, brilliant. And then an evening ride home on amazing roads. Win, win. Win, 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 win. If anyone doubts that British roads are not great for riding a motorbike, this is a removal of doubt just now. Despite my slow speed, it's wonderful. That is the lowest level. That's it. We're at 10% now. Bloody oh, hell. <laughs> mm, that is a lot of light. <clears throat> okay, right. <clears throat> Let's see how we do. Time to test the lights. I'm going to get some fuel because I've We've got 39 miles left. Still done. Over 200 miles a day, so that's not too bad. On the tank. Let's give the Denali lights a full beam. Mmm. Those uh, upper ones are facing down quite a bit. We'll go out on the fence and adjust them shortly. That is a lot of light though, isn't it? So the Hero 7 has been the most reliable GoPro I've ever had. The 5 was flaky. The 8 flaky. But the uh, 7 down there on the crash bar. It's been pretty reasonable actually. Not had too many problems with that. Hey you. <laughs> Blind as a bat, eh? The horn must have woken them up. <laughs> What's the word I should use? You beep. Let's put that into uh, diner. That's better. Bind all the panniers and stuff now. So it should be a pretty light wheat. Still no one's flashed. It's a problem with um this time of year, if you want to test lights, you need to be out quite late. Just 
with the lights up. But well, you can see a lot of road in front of me. No one's flashing, so they must be quite happy with the 10% intensity. Getting late. It's now 9.34. Going out to the deepest Finland to twiddle with the lights. I can do that without annoying anyone. So we're out in the middle of nowhere, it's uh, dip beam, not dip beam, 10%. Let's um, adjust this little beastie up. It doesn't make a lot of difference. Sorry about there. Cool. I think the thing is, because these are low down, That's a bugger, isn't it? Let's try the other one. How's that one looking? And that one. Not really a lot of light unless you put them on high beam. I think we need to go somewhere else, really. Let's try it here. Can I adjust this one? Probably about there. That's probably about right. They're probably not far off. Spot on now. Spot on, get it? It wasn't very funny, was it? Let's just have a, a little walk around. Certainly from the side, there's a lot of light coming off. Ooh, bloody hell. Oh dear. Mm, that is a lot of light, isn't it? I wonder if I need to uh, drop those back a bit. Just a little tiny bit. Probably as good as we're going to get without having someone to help us. Right, okay, let's... It's getting dark enough for lights to have some effect now. <sighs> Bloody gnat inside my helmet. Arts. Right, let's uh, see what sort of speed it allows you to do on high beam. Or full power, I should say. I mustn't call it high beam. Yeah, you can see to do lots of speed. No problem. Easy. Fucking like road signs dazzle you. does remind me of my Escort Mark II with the CB Oscars on. I could do a ton all night in that. Well, not all night. I could do a ton anyway. I'll see where I was going. No problem. <laughs> it probably would have overheated if I'd have done a ton for more than five minutes. But there we are. What a brilliant set of lights for night riding.
Oh, that. Bonkers. What conclusion do I have from these lights? They uh, seem to work. Okay. You'll certainly get um, plenty of light for driving at whatever speed you want on high beam. And no one's flashed me on on the tip. Oh, sorry. Well, I shouldn't call it high beam on 100%. No one's flashed me up the 10% setting. What I just need to do is set a daytime level so that when it's not night that they run at a slightly higher power for daytime making sure people see you. That'll do for this little Fentor episode. We'll catch up with you soon. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up and all that good stuff. And we'll see you next time. All the best. Cheers, everybody.